We're gonna move and groove and have some fun today. It's time for music class. It's time for music class. I sing you happy me. We are singing. Tracking the talker. Crisscross applesauce. Crisscross. Hands in our lap. Hands in our lap. Voices off. Thank you. Here's what we're doing in music today. We will sing and move to old Dan Tucker very, very quickly today. Then we will discover our rhythm of the day. We will discover the instruments of the brass family. This is Al's favorite family. And listen to and analyze William Tell Overture. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is to sing and move to old Dan Tucker. Now we did this back in September, I want to say, maybe into October. Um, and it was a dance. It was a line dance that we did. And I played it on guitar and I was trying to dance and play guitar at the same time. And I decided that that was not a good idea <laughs> um, because this is a review day. Um, we have some different movement activities that we do, like warrior cry, rhythm exercises, down, down baby, some other things like that. Um, so old Ann Tucker is going to be one that elementary academy can revisit. So let's just revisit how this goes. It's been quite a long time. Okay. So the song goes, went to town the other night. I heard the noise and saw the fight. The watchman was a running round crying, old Dan Tucker's come to town. Old Dan Tucker's back in town, swinging ladies all around. First to the right and then to the left, and then the gal that he loves best. Now that's the verse to the song. I don't expect you to know those words. Your job is to know the chorus of the song. Get out the way, get out the way. Get out the way, old Dan Tucker, you're too late to come to supper. Okay. Now, like I said, move my chair out of the way. This is a line dance, and I'm in my teeny tiny, the smallest room in my house. Um, so I don't have a lot of space to move. My, I'm pressed up against the wall. My computer's pressed up against the wall. So I'm going to do my very best to show you the steps. Okay. So we start walking forward, okay? We take four steps forward and feet together. Okay, so it starts. Went to town the other night. And then you go backwards. I heard the noise and saw the fight. Then you go to the right. The watchman was a running round. Then to the left. Crying, old Dan Tucker's come to town. And then you repeat that. Old Dan Tucker's back in town. Swinging ladies all around. First to the right and then to the left. Then the gal that he loves best. Now, the only thing we can add to make it a little bit more polished, a little more fancy, is when you get to your last step of each movement, you clap. Okay, so I'm gonna walk forward. When I get to the front, I clap. When I get to the back, I clap. When I get all the way to the right, I clap. When I get all the way to the left, I clap, okay? So let's try it. The chorus is a little bit different. Do your best. If you make a mistake, no big deal. Here we go. I went to town the other night. I heard the noise and saw the fight. The watchman was a running round crying, Old Dan Tucker's come to town. Old Dan Tucker's back in town. Swinging ladies all around. First to the right and then to the left. Then the gal that he loves best. Okay, now we're at the chorus part that you need to know. And we're going to step, step, turn, step, step, turn. Let me say, get out the way, get out the way. And then you do a heel toe move. So put your hands on your hips or on your waist, kick out your foot. So your heels touch in the ground and then kick it back and touch your toes to the ground. Get out the way, old Dan Tucker. You're too late to come to supper. Get out the way, old Dan Tucker. You're too late to come to supper. Okay, let's put the whole thing together. We're going to do this like once every three weeks or so. So if you don't make it today, don't worry. We'll review it a couple more times. Here we go. Forward first. I went to town the other night. I heard the noise and saw the fire. 
Watchman was a running round, crying, Old Dan Tucker's come to town. Old Dan Tucker's back in town, swinging ladies all around. First to the right and then to the left. Then the gal that he loves best. Get out the way. Get out the way. Get out the way, old Dan Tucker. You were too late to come to supper. There we go. There's a second verse and a third verse. And it's actually like seven verses to that song, but we'll just do a verse and a chorus for now. Okay. Moving on to our rhythm of the day. These are the four sounds that we've heard so far in music class, and they might look a little bit different today. Uh, before, when I had my ta, way up there at the top, it was just a vertical line. When I had my tt, it was two vertical lines with a line across top. The sh looks exactly the same. But the tika tika used to be four vertical lines and two horizontal lines. Now all the vertical lines have a circle on them. That's called the head of the note. And that's the way that music is usually written. Um, but today we're adding something to it, to uh, another sound, a fifth sound, uh, that needs to have those head on the notes. So when you look at ta, now it's going to be a straight vertical line up and down with a head. TT is two vertical lines with heads, and then bar across top, and then tika tika, four vertical lines with four heads. The vertical lines, from now on I'm going to call them stems, a single stem with a head, that's a ta. Two stems, bar across the top with two heads, that's TT. Four stems with four, uh, two horizontal lines, two bars, and four heads. Notice that all of those heads are filled in, they're colored in. That's going to be important. Now, right up above my head, we have a new sound. Let me make myself a little bigger. Um, it looks a lot like a quarter note, except the circle at the head is not filled in. It's an open circle. Okay? We call this ta. So if ta, 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 ta is one clap, when we have a ta, that lasts for two beats. Ta, ta. In music, we call that a half note, but for us, we're just going to call it ta. Half note's kind of a Maybe we'd say a fourth grade to middle school uh, way of saying it. Okay, so if I look at my rhythm on the side here, I see ta, ti, ti, ta. Notice how the ta looks, and then notice how the ta at the very end looks. Ta has an open circle, ta is filled in. Okay, so I'm going to say this rhythm. We're just going to do it at an andante tempo now. I'd like you to say it with me. Until I say fine. Here I go. Ta, ti, ti, ta, ta, ti, ti, ta, ta, ti, ti, ta, ta, ti, ti, ta, fine. Okay, now let's do it a few times. Uh, I'm going to start largo. I'm going to go really slow to start. Then we'll do it andante, then allegro, and then presto. Each time I'll say fine in between to know we're done. Largo. Here we go. Ta, ti, ti, ta. Ta, ti, ti, ta. Ta, ti, ti, ta. Ta, ti, ti, ta. Fine. Okay, now let's do it andante, walking speed. Here we go. Ta, ti, ti, ta, ta, ti, ti, ta, ta, ti, ti, ta, ta, ti, ti, ta, fine. We already did on that day, so we didn't do too many of those. Okay, now we're going to bump it up to Allegro skipping speed. It's going to go faster. Here we go. Ta, ti, ti, ta, 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 ta, and last, we're going to go presto, running speed, fast. Here we go. Ta, 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 ta,
I like to ta. I feel like leaning into it like that. Okay, so we're adding ta sounds into our rhythm of the day, um, which will be this week and then next week. And then after next week, we're going to be switching to a new music theory activity. So we did secret word of the day. Now we're doing rhythm of the day. And very soon we're going to switch to our third thing, which I think will be fun. Okay. In the past, we've talked about different instrument families. So we've talked about string families at the beginning of the year. There's the woodwind family. And then over on the right, we have the brass family, which we're going to talk about today keyboard family, and the percussion family. So just a really re quick recap. The string family, that's violin, viola, cello, and double bass, or upright bass. They also have things like the guitar, and the mandolin, and the lute, and some different things in there. Woodwind family, we're not talking about yet. Uh, brass family to talk about today. The keyboard family, that was piano, organ, harpsichord, and accordion. And the percussion family was the biggest family. There was a bazillion things snare drum, bass drum, maracas, claves, a go go bell, gankogi, huero, tambourine, triangle, a whole bunch of things. But today our focus is the brass family of instruments. Um, there are four main instruments in the brass family that we are going to talk about today. There are more than just four, but there are four that we need to discover together. Uh, here are some things that I thought you would need to know about the brass family. First of all, pictures of instruments in the brass family are up above my head. They play louder than any other instrument family. They're the loud ones. They're usually supposed to be loud because they are maybe the instruments that play a fanfare. Something like, look at me, we're going to play a great song. Um, and because of that, they can be heard far away. Um... They might be said like a, like a fanfare uh, in the olden times. It might be played in like a king's court to announce the presence of the king. Uh, they're played in parades for different things because parades are usually very, very loud, attention-getting, fun things. Uh, their early ancestors have been made out of wood, tusks or horns from animals or shells. Um, modern instruments are made out of metal. Now, this is called the brass family, so can you imagine what what type of metal these instruments were traditionally made out of? Brass. Yes, I have now seen a few made out of plastic. I've seen plastic uh, trombones and plastic trumpets. I've not seen the other two in plastic. Um, but from what I know, they are not as good as the metal ones. Um, so we'll just say that modern ones are made out of metal. Brass instruments are made out of long pipes that widen at the end into a bell shape. So if you look at those four pictures, you'll see some kind of skinny tube that kind of wraps around in a certain way, and then they all flare out into a bell shape. They get wide at the top. That helps them project, helps them be louder so they can be heard farther, farther away. Uh, this is a wind instrument, which means you use your breath to make the sound. Um, not like keyboard or strings or percussion where you use your hands to make all the sound. You need your breath to add the sound to it. You vibrate your lips by buzzing into the mouthpiece. So if you make your hand into a little circle and put your lips against it, <laughs> go, <laughs> make my face a little bigger so you can see it. <laughs> That's what you do to make a sound on a brass instrument. Um, and then you have valves and slides that change the pitch. That's the highs and lows of the instrument. And uh, next week, I'll get to show you that a little bit. Uh, so now I'm going to take you through the, these four main instruments of the brass family, tell you a little bit about them, and then we'll hear some audio examples, some sound examples from each one. I can show my volumes up. Okay, so the first one is the brass family. Uh, of the brass family is the trumpet, and the trumpet is one of my favorite instruments. When I joined band when I was in fifth grade, I started on the trumpet. Um, I will say it was not my first choice of instrument, but my brother had played the trumpet before me, so it was kind of a hand-me-down, so I didn't really have a choice to play it. So here are some things I thought you'd like to know about the trumpet. 
uh, in the brass family. It is the highest instrument of the brass family. That means it plays way up here. It can play super duper screecher high. Um, so it usually plays the melody, the main tune of a song, um, because it plays nice and high where people can hear it really well. Throughout history, it has been used to sound alarms, gather people together as a call to war and to add luster to a parade. Um, so if, let's say, you were in the military during the time of the Revolutionary War and you wanted to tell your troops to move forward or to move back, uh, you didn't have a cell phone that you could call the front line and say, hey, let's get out of here. Um, they had to have it like a secret signal. So they had trumpet players or probably back then bugle players, which were a lot like trumpets, that would sound the call and then all the soldiers would be able to hear that and know what to do. And they would have different songs that told them what to do. Um, there's a very famous song called Taps that's played in the military. Um, there's also one called Reveille, and that tells people in the military maybe to wake up in the morning. Um, that's what Reveille is. Dun, 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 um, and that's traditionally played on the trumpet. Uh, it has three valves. So if you look at that picture above me, that young gentleman is playing with his fingers. Uh, three valves, kind of like three buttons on the top. And if you push different combinations of those valves, it makes different sounds. It's a slender pipe that's bent into long loops. If you were to stretch all the metal of a trumpet out, it would be six and a half feet long. And you hold it horizontally, so like out like this in front of you. Now this guy in the picture is holding it kind of at an angle because he's really into playing, making some cool music. But it's held up horizontally in front of you. I have two short audio clips, two short sound clips that I'd like to play for you so you know the different sounds that a trumpet makes. Here's the first one. I like that one because it's kind of jazzy. And here's another one. Cool. All right, so that's the trumpet. One of my favorite instruments because I played it when I was in middle school. Uh, next is the French horn. My, my other favorite one because I played French horn as in high school and in college. Uh, they come from French hunting horns, so kind of like we were talking about how they wanted to sound some kind of alarm and communicate to the other people. Um, hunting, big hunting parties would go out maybe fox hunting, and they would need to communicate to each other that we needed to go, communicate to their hunting dogs what they were doing. So that's where these came from. Um, they can play loud. They can play soft. They can have a very harsh, kind of bright in your face kind of sound, or they can sound very mellow. Um, just like the trump trumpet, it's a long tube, but instead of just doing little flips and turns, they make it into a circular shape. If you were to stretch out all the piping, it would be 18 feet long. That's three times longer than the tubing in a trumpet. It has a very large bell at the end. You play it as the picture shows, the gentleman above. Hold it with the bell curving downward towards kind of like your hip. Your left hand plays the three or four valves, depending on what kind of French horn you have. And that changes the sound. And then your right hand is inside the bell, as you can see in that picture. And you can move your hand around a little bit to make it play different sounds. Uh, here's the sound of French horn. I only have two sounds. One is very short, so I'm going to play it a few times. <laughs> there you go. To me, that sounds very harsh. Uh, and here's another sound of the French horn. There we go. Uh, so that's the French horn. Makes some really cool sounds, and uh, we'll get to hear it again next week. Okay, uh, next we move on to the trombone. The trombone is different. It uses a slide instead of valves, and it is the only instrument in the brass family to do that. Um, actually, 
far as I know, the only instrument of all the instruments to do that, of the mainstream ones. Um, okay, so he uses a slide instead of valve, so you can see the guy standing like this. He would move his right hand forward to make that tube um, in a different spot. So that's how it changes the pitch by using that slide. It has a long, thin brass pipe that's bent to make an S shape. And if you stretch that tubing all out, it will be nine feet long. Uh, like I said, you can change the pitch by moving the slide to make the instrument longer or shorter. And that's really what all the different instruments of the brass family do when you press down those valves, like on a trumpet, um, is it opens up different parts and different tubes to change how much length the air that you blow has to go through. And that's what really changes the pitch. On a trombone, you just don't do that with valves, you just do it with a slide. Just like the trumpet, you hold it horizontally to make the sound, and this is considered a low brass instrument. Um, because it's low brass, most often I would say, it plays some kind of harmony sounds. Um, they definitely have their time to shine, but um, trump if I had to choose between trumpets and trombones, which one's gonna play the melody? Most, most composers, people who write music, give it to the trumpets first because they can play in a higher range versus the trombone who plays in a lower range. I didn't say this before, but now that I think about it, French horns kind of switch back and forth. Sometimes they play melody, sometimes they play harmony. Harmony is like background music. So let's listen to a couple examples of what a trombone sounds like. I'm going to play this one twice because it's kind of short. Okay, I'll play that again. And here's another one. I'll just play this one once. Ooh, that sounds kind of eerie. <laughs> I like that one. All right, we have one more instrument left in the brass family to talk about, and that is the tuba. It is the largest and lowest brass instrument. Um, it is heavy. My brother, who started on the uh, trumpet, he switched to the tuba when he was in high school. So I've held his tuba before. I'm going to borrow it from him for next week so I can show it to you. Um, it is heavy. It is hard to hold up for a very long time. Um, there is another instrument related to the tuba that's called a sousaphone. I don't have a sousaphone, um, but we'll maybe talk about it in our next video. Probably will. Um, that is kind of a lighter version um, of the tuba, and it kind of wraps around you, and that's like a tuba for marching band, which is kind of cool. Uh, like I said, it is the lowest brass instrument, lowest pitch. So trombone and tuba are the two members of the low brass. And because it is low, it anchors the whole orchestra or the whole band. Um, a lot of times your conductor might say, listen for the tuba. They also say, like, listen to the percussion section, but listen to the tuba because they anchor the whole band. It is a very long tube with a large bell that points upward. You stretch it all out, it's 16 feet long. Uh, the reason it's pointed upward is because you want that low brass sound to go up and over the band so that everybody around the tuba can hear it. It has the mar largest mouthpiece, and I'll show you mouthpieces uh, next week. But remember I talked about how that you hold that circle to blow? <clears throat> when you do the tuba, it's like a big circle. You get your whole mouth around it when you play it. <laughs> it's kind of fun. Uh, tuba also has three valves, just like the trumpet, that change the pitch. You also always have to sit down to play the play the tuba. Um, a guy that I went to college with had a harness that he held, had that strapped around the back that would help him hold the weight up um, when he wanted to stand and play, but otherwise he usually use a sousaphone, completely different instrument, to play the tuba if you want to stand. It takes a lot of breath to play. You have to empty your lungs and take a lot of big breaths in order to make the best loud sound on a tuba. So those are the four instruments of the brass family. The trumpet, the French horn, the trombone, and the tuba. There are others. Um, euphonium and baritone are kind of like mini tubas. There's one called a flugelhorn. It's kind of like a trumpet. A cornet is like a mini trumpet. That's what I have and that's what I'll show you next week. Um, mellophone, and there's some other ones. But the four main ones that we're supposed to know in elementary academy, trumpet, French horn, trombone, and tuba. 
Um, okay, the last thing that I'm going to have you do is something you're going to do on your own, and that is to listen to a song called William Tell Overture. This is a song that heavily features brass instruments, especially right at the beginning of it. You'll hear the trumpet. So you're going to hear the trumpet right away, and then the other brass instruments come in. This over here to my right is a list of questions that I often ask scholars when we're in person. So I just want you to ponder these and think these as you listen to it. So in the description below, I'm gonna put the link to William Tell Overture. And these are the three questions that I want you to think about as you listen to it. First is what do you hear? Fast or slow notes? Is it Largo? Is it Andante? Is it Allegro? Is it Presto? How fast or slow does it go? Do you hear loud or soft notes? Now I'll say this, the speed or the tempo of the music and the dynamics, the louds and softs can change in a song and that's A-OK. -okay. So if you're listening to it and you're like, well, it started off really soft, but then it got louder. That's not your ears playing tricks with you. That's just how the song's written. Are there instruments? Which ones? Here's a hint. We're talking about the brass family today. So that might help you. Are people singing? Because your voice is an instrument also. Second question, what do you feel? Does this music make you feel happy or bored or brave or excited or lethargic? I don't know. How does it make you feel? What impact does it have on you? And then the last question, what do you picture when you listen to this music and you pause to have some kind of imagination stirring around in your head? What does it make you think about? You can write the answers to these questions down if you'd like. I'd always appreciate having it sent to me. Uh, several kids did that in the last time we listened to some music. Um, but I'd love to hear what elementary academy scholars have to think. If you don't want to write it down, you don't have to, um, but just something to think about as you're listening to William Tell Overture. Uh, okay, uh, we only have one thing left to do today, and that is to do our train exit. So breathe with me, elementary academy. Here we go. Thank you for joining me for music today. And thank you for making music with me today when we were doing Old Dan Tucker. That was lots of fun. Uh, we will see you next week. Have a great day.